Hello, hello and welcome everyone to our higher ed webinar. So nice to see you. Um, I see that people are coming in from all over the world. Hello to everyone coming in from all over the States, Oman, Jordan, Paraguay. It's all very exciting. Um, my name is Alex. I'm the community specialist here at Kahoot. So I'm from England, but I work uh, in the Barcelona office. So I'm based in Spain. And it's my colleague, Holly, who will also be hosting with me. Hi, everybody. I'm Holly. I'm the project manager for higher ed at Kahoot. Um, and I'm so excited to host this webinar tonight with Alex. It's really exciting uh, to see everybody joining in from around the world. We have some super exciting um, new features to share with you. And we have a really marvelous uh, speaker that we will also be turning the stage over to in a little bit. Yeah, so just a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, if you guys have questions throughout the webinar, um, you don't need to save them to the end. You can ask them there and then, because uh, I've got another colleague, Hannah, who will be looking. Uh, you just need to click the Q&A button. So on my screen, that's the one next to your green arrow that says share. Uh, there's a Q&A function. So just pop a question in there as and when you hear something. Also, this webinar is being recorded. So if you want to look back at anything or if you miss something, uh, that will be emailed to you afterwards with the recording. So don't worry about that. All right. So we're going to get started, but we are happy to welcome Amin Kaur. Amin is the University of Pennsylvania's inaugural health literacy librarian based in the Leon Levy uh, Dental Medicine Library. And in the hybrid role, Amin primarily assists with the collection, development, reference, and instructional support at the School of Dental Medicine and its interdisciplinary collaborations. Amin is also engaged in planning community health engagement initiatives in collaboration with partners both on and off the campus. So welcome, Amin, and we'll turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. I'm gonna share my screen. And I'm excited to share um, how I've experienced Kahoot as both an educator and as a student. Um, and let's begin with a Kahoot. So you can scan the QR code and join with the game pen, um, or you can go to www.kahoot.it um, or the use the Kahoot app if you have it on your device. The game pen is 244-035. Okay, so let's see, we have about 50 people um, signed into the Kahoot. So I'm going to start the Kahoot. And yeah, so this is actually one of the, the slides I was able to import pretty easily. And I believe. You know, for anyone who's still interested in joining the Kahoot, you can still do so um, by going to kahoot.it and then entering the, the game pen. Uh, so um, the next slide is actually going to be one of the question slides. So I would like you to drop a pin on where you're joining this webinar from. Let's skip. And then here's our map of at least the 57 people who were able to answer the, the question. And uh, I'm not sure if the Kahoot team is able to um, chime in on the on the issue of it's just spinning. I see that in the, the chat. Um, OK, so um, Here's a list of like ways I've been using Kahoot over the years. Um, so sometimes I use it in the beginning of a presentation to introduce myself. I've also used it at, um, in the form of like pre-tests or surveys or icebreaker questions like the one that you answered um, just now. Um, at the end of the presentation, um, I can also use Kahoot as a summative assessment or a post-test. Um, yeah, I've also used Kahoot for trivia competitions, both um, live and asynchronous uh, as well, which can be uh, for educational purposes, but it can also be like for fun. Um, 
And earlier this year, um, my library director used Kahoot to get responses from focus group participants. And um, after each um, question, um, they would use the answers to ask like verbal follow-up questions, which I thought was a pretty neat way of using uh, Kahoot. Um, so I use Kahoot uh, because uh, many of my students are already familiar with Kahoot from their like K-12 experiences. Uh, I find that students and any Kahoot participant sort of has a competitive edge. So it's, it can be kind of fun to see who can answer questions correctly the fastest without, um, uh, and you can offer prizes, you can, you know, students can win bragging rights at the end of the presentation or after a lesson. Um, and in regards to the general flow of a presentation, I can use Kahoot to engage with my audience while also catching my own breath uh, and getting a sip of water as well. And um, my advice for uh, anyone who's new to using Kahoot within your own presentations or lessons, I recommend thinking about the types of questions you already ask um, during existing presentations or lessons or workshops and how to use those particular questions to create your first Kahoot. Um, I recommend testing out your Kahoot on multiple devices, um, such as a computer browser, a smartphone app, a tablet app, so you can see um, how uh, your participants will experience the Kahoot. Um, And then after this webinar, I also encourage you to sign up for a free Kahoot account. Uh, once you sign up, you have access to a library of existing Kahoots. Um, so you can find one uh, and play it. You can even make a copy of it, uh, edit it to your liking, and then test it out um, with your students or colleagues um, or your loved ones. Um, I do trivia stuff with, with my friends using Kahoot as well um, you know, outside of uh, like the work environment. Um, I've used it with my colleagues during professional development uh, sessions. Uh, and you can actually see um, you know, the Kahoot library as well. So you know, the Kahoots that I've created, but then you can also like access more themes as well. So it's, you know, there's already a lot of um, Kahoots out there that are waiting to be used. Uh, as well. And then out of curiosity, how likely are you to explore Kahoot after this webinar? So this is a scale of zero to 10. And I think Kahoot is one of the, the educational technologies where it's like, it's fun to use as an instructor as well as a student. So it is kind of interesting to you know, see the wide variety of um, topic areas within Kahoot. Um, and it looks like there's a message in the chat about emailing community at kahoot.com uh, for training sessions and demos. And then show the answer. So looks like most people want to at least explore it. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then my last question is, what questions do you have? So in this case, you get to type a, a question in the chat, I believe. Um, up to 250 characters. And one of the things that you might be curious about is like the types of questions. So I'm gonna pull up um, one of my example cahoots that I've used. Um, so you can have like multiple choice. Um, so in this case, I can you know, mark certain um, you know, responses as the correct answer. I can also have multiple correct answers as well within a question. Um, 
And this one I use like true and false. And I see a couple of questions in the, the chat as well. Um, how do you add people to your group account? Um, that might be a question for the Kahoot staff. Um, but um, you can play Kahoot um, through Teams. So there is like a, I, I could have put this in a team mode as well and given people a chance to you know, talk to their team members if you're watching the, the webinar with multiple people. Um, and then the team um, submits their answer together. Um, and I think that feature works better like in in-person um, situations where you have like students that are in like their own table groups. And then I see that someone's interested in turning um, PowerPoint uh, into a Kahoot. Um, so what I use Google Slides and I was able to pretty seamlessly just upload um, the slides um, into Kahoot. So the first step is to create your slides um, and, and make sure that your slides look good um, to your liking and, and then downloading the slides and then uploading them into Kahoot's. And then you can reorder your slides, but you can't edit your slides within Kahoot. Uh, so that could be kind of a challenge. Okay, cool. And let's see what other questions we can have. Okay. What's the weather? Uh, so um, in Philadelphia, it's, a, it's chilly in the mornings, but um, you know, warmer in the, the afternoons. Uh, yeah. So can I incorporate Google Slides with Kahoot? Yes, that's exactly what I did. Um, so if I go to like create Kahoot, I can import my slides here if I had slides to import. Um, and, and you that, can I, mean, um, I was just going to say there's a lot if there's questions you're not sure about how to answer I see a mm -hmm. lot of questions that we're going to cover um, yeah. a little bit so don't don't worry about feeling like you have to answer them all so just feel free to answer any of the remaining questions that um, yeah. you can answer uh, let's see. I'm gonna quickly scan through to see whatever uh, what other things I've done. Um, I haven't used AI to make Kahoot, but I have uploaded a YouTube video, uh, so that is possible to do within a question. Um, and then, and I and I agree with this response as well. I, I think you'll have more questions once you try to create your own Kahoot. But I think that's like the the whole thing about like learning and exploring and experimenting is we end up, you know, uh, with more questions and that's always uh, good that we're always like learning. And then I'll hand it back to the Kahoot staff uh, you know, because I think they're going to present more on the features and they might actually answer some more of these questions. Uh, and then, yeah, thank you all for, um, yeah, you know, taking the time to to listen to me present about how I've used Kahoot. Yay, thank you so much. That was brilliant. Um, I really enjoyed uh, hearing about all the different ways uh, that you use Kahoot at your university. Um, I was particularly interested in saying when you said your colleagues used it as a focus group method. I mean, that's really interesting. You could definitely use a lot of the features like open-ended questions. The net promoter score would be really great for those kind of survey uh, options because you can ask a lot of opinion based questions in Kahoot, not just content yes or no questions, which is great. Um, uh, yes, so Holly and I will go on to talk about some of the AI features in Kahoot because you guys have just mentioned those and demonstrate how a couple of things work. So, Holly, you can go first. 
Perfect. No, I love that presentation. And I really, really appreciate hearing from um, different higher ed users across the campus. We know that Cahoots is a super valuable tool um, in teaching and instruction, but there's so much value um, in a number of different use cases. So really awesome to hear from Amen on how she is using Kahoot um, in her work with the library. So um, as promised, we're going to first kind of go over um, some AI features that Kahoot has right now. So I am here in the home, uh, the home area of Kahoot. Uh, so let's see here. Oh, I see that my screen's actually too wide. So I'm going to create a Kahoot. And for those of you that have been using Kahoot for a while, you may have noticed that we've we've slowly added more and more boxes to the screen when you go to create a Kahoot. So the first one that we're going to look into is just this Kahoot generator. So creating a Kahoot based on a topic and using AI. So I am going to put in a topic. Um, again, for higher ed, we know that you're, you're doing a lot of very specific, detailed um, lectures. So I put in dosage for pediatrics nursing. Um, as you can see here, you can set the language, the skill level, the tone of voice. Um, I'll kind of show you the difference between quiz and presentation in a, a little bit later but I have dosage for pediatric nursing. So let's see what happens when I generate this Kahoot. Um, you will start to see a bunch of questions kind of being added. And so what I can do is just kind of go through and say, okay, that's a good question. I wanna add that. Um, which units commonly used? Perfect. Um, let's add this one. Um, there we go. Perfect. So I've added in a couple of questions. And so I put add all 12 in. And now you can see that I have essentially very quickly created a coot um, with a number of questions that I wanted from AI. I can also just really simply go in and edit. So um, let's see. What is the most critical factor in pediatric dosing that all nurses need to know, right? If I, if I wanna simply reword that, it's really easy um, to go ahead and do that. Now, say I've created my Kahoot, but I feel like there is a question that's just missing. I can also just go in to generate. So perhaps I want, a question that's even more specific about dosing. So I could say um, dosing, let's see, nursing dosage for newborns. And now I can, again, go through and see, okay, what question is really good for newborns? Um, which method is not recommended? I'm going to go in and add that question. So there's a couple of different um, ways that you can use AI um, in, in quickly generating a Kahoot. But I am going to go back and I am also going to now show you how to use AI um, if you already have a really, a, a document created or prepared. Um, and so we're back here in create and you can see that I want to now use the Kahoot generator to create a Kahoot based on a PDF file. So now I'm being told to upload my file. So I am, going to upload this document. Um, you'll see all of the pages in the document and you have the ability to generate from all of them or to do a range. So I'm, I'm actually going to say, let's just do the first five pages. And I am generating again. I have this ability to set the level, the language, the tone of voice, 
One thing that you'll notice a lot when you use the AI features is that um, it often will give you a poll question to start because it's always nice when you're doing a presentation to start with a poll question. Um, so we'll add that. Who is the king of the Olympian gods? Perfect. Um, so again, it just quickly took my notes and made a quiz. Now, as I mentioned before, you can also do a presentation format. So if I click format presentation refresh, what you're gonna see is that it took a lot of those notes and it made a lot more slides. So here are some Kahoot slides that now have been generated. And you'll see that you know a good presentation includes slides, but it also includes questions. So as you can see, as we move through here, we have questions, we have slides. Um, so pretty cool feature. Um, and then let's see here. Um, believe that is the main events for showcasing AI. So I'm going to stop. And we will let Alex kind of take this a step further and show us what this can look like doing more, um, taking existing lectures and as Amin kind of hinted, um, using existing PowerPoints and Google Slides to create cahoots and materials. Awesome. Thanks so much, Holly. Right. So I'm going to share my screen now so we can have a gander together. So uh, just like Holly did before, I'm going to click the blue create button. And once there, uh, you want to click Kahoot. Um, so this time I want to look at importing slides. So when you click this option, um, PowerPoint is coming soon. However, we've got Google Slides and a PDF document. OK, so I'm going to show you the PDF one first. So um, here is a PDF that I've used before. Um, I used to teach at a university here in Barcelona. I was teaching English as a foreign language. So uh, this is a lecture to do with food and cooking. There's a video involved. There's some grammar uh, and there's some other bits. So at this point, I can choose which slides I want to do individually. If you just want to do a section of your presentation or just click here and just click add all. If I want everything. OK, so we can see it's like just loading now and all my slides are coming in. OK, now you can then add Kahoot questions throughout uh, your presentation. So I wish this existed when I worked at the university because I would often have a lecture and then come out of the lecture to then go into a Kahoot quiz, whereas this integrates it all throughout, which is great. So if I was doing a question at the start of the lecture, I might choose a question type uh, like poll, for example, to get some people's opinions. Um, if I was adding a question, I can obviously, obviously drag it around so you can choose where it comes in your presentation. You can add a question in wherever you like. Um, some questions like word cloud, quite nice uh, to add in. Um, if you just want to quickly see what everyone in the class knows about a subject and you see like the key words that they might know, uh, that's a good one as well. Uh, and then uh, halfway through the class where you might be doing more project based learning, um, maybe something along the end lines of a brainstorm, um, which is quite nice. You'll get to see some of these features in action in a bit. I have prepared a Kahoot with those if you've not used any of these features. So I would probably do a brainstorm somewhere in the middle. And then towards the end of my lecture, I'd probably add the more content based questions of getting them to click the multiple choices or your kind of uh, classic Kahoot options here. And of course, you can still set the timer, um, whether they're doing multi-select, whether you're going to do points or double points. All of that is available um, as per usual. But it just means that you've got your full lecture there with these fun uh, options integrated throughout. So that one is um, for the PDF. It works much the same if you're doing Google Slides. So you go back to clicking Create, clicking Kahoot, click Import Slides, and then you say Sync with Google Slides. So this should take you to your uh, Google Drive. 
And then I want to add in this climate change presentation that I've used before. And again, you get the same screen where it starts to load uh, your slides. So uh, again, I can um, uh, choose which ones to go in. Um, and then we've got this edit one, so I could just add if I wanted to, but I think I'll probably just add all of them. Um, but if you think, oh, I've forgotten a really important thing that I wanna add in, just add a slide here and you can add some more things as and when you think about it. So if you did go back into your file and update some things on your presentation, not a problem. You can just add uh, more of them in. And then we just click add question and you choose which ones. So if you want something with an audio, you can do that. That's quite a fun feature, especially if you're teaching languages like I was, um, puzzle feature, whatever you want really. And then you move it uh, accordingly. So uh, when you do this presentation, um, you would start it like a normal presentation. So um, obviously they, they were like, you've not put the answers in. <laughs> uh, that's what, it, what it's saying. But uh, basically it will open exactly how Amanda did her uh, lecture. So we all joined the Kahoot at the beginning, but we actually opened with slides and learned a bit about what she was doing. And then the questions appeared. So that's what it would look like if you were to do it in class. Okay. Um, right. I'm going to pass back to you, I think, Holly. Perfect. Um, so we are going to, oops, we are going to get into assignments. Let me just stop share for a moment. Okay. Okay. So one of the cool features about Kahoot that I um, I'm not sure how commonly used is, but we all know about doing Kahoot's live in front of an audience or during a webinar like we are today. Um, but it's also possible to assign Kahoot. So um one of the ways we're gonna do that is I'm just gonna first showcase how. <laughs> how many amazing cahoots have already been created by some of the folks in our higher ed community. Um, so we are gonna put back in our, our search um, dosage for pediatric nursing. And let's just see what we find. So I, I selected cahoots um, and you can see this is all of the cahoots that have come up for um, Pediat dosage for pediatric nursing. Some of these may be really good, some may be less um, relevant. Um, but anyway, we're going to just pick one. Um, some of these have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, anyway, we will pick this pharmacology exam review. And so again, if I found content on Discover, I can certainly go in. You definitely want to make sure that it works for your purposes as well. Um, but it's often a good way, again, to find a Kahoot um, that somebody's already created that maybe just needs simple edits. So you have this ability to assign a Kahoot. So when you do that, you can set a deadline or not um, but say I want my students to do this ahead of an exam, which is going to be on the 20th. So they have till the 20th at 11 p.m. I think it's generally good practice when you are assigning a Kahoot to um, turn on or turn off the, the question um, timer. Um, player identification can be useful if you want to know who is um, creating the Kahoot. Uh, again, personalized learning allows somebody to, a student to go in after the Kahoot and to essentially keep practicing on any of the questions that they may have had a challenge with. Um, I probably don't want to randomize the answer. Holly, then, yep. so sorry to interrupt you. Um, the way that you shared your screen, it does not allow us to see pop-up windows. So we weren't following along okay. with the Discover search. Let me 
share this screen then. All right. And can you see the size? Okay. That looks better. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Um, I was trying something new because I saw that last time um, people were having a hard time with this size. So we are going to assign this Kahoot um, that we are going to find just based on searching in our Discover. So here we go. And then right here, you'll sign this, you'd see this assign. And as I was saying before, as you could hear me, but maybe not see me, um, is you can set the deadline. So again, I've set the deadline. I wanna keep the timer off. I do wanna have the player identification on. I also wanna leave personalized learning on. I wanna keep the, um, I don't wanna randomize the answer order and I don't wanna use the nickname generator. So I'm gonna say create. So now you have this QR code and you have the URL. Um, you have a couple of different ways you can share this with your students. I think perhaps the easiest is just copying this URL, um, emailing it to students, embedding it in a syllabus or perhaps in your LMS somewhere um, so that they have access to access to it, um, or just putting the game pin on the board and reminding them to go to www.kahoot.it to play. And so it's really great because students can do this at home and they can use it to practice and study. Now, another feature um, is reports and reporting is really useful because now you have a chance to see how did the students do on that assigned Kahoot? Or how did the students do on the Kahoot that I ran during class? And so if you go over to reports here, um, you'll see all your reports and they have them divided by the ones you played in live classic mode. So in front of um, perhaps live again, such as we've done earlier this webinar, or you can go into your assigned Kahoots. And so right now you can see here's the Kahoot that I just I just assigned, um, but I want to go in and I want to see this report from a Kahoot I assigned to folks um, earlier this week. Um, right here you'll see very quickly that it didn't appear that it was too challenging for folks. Um, everybody finished and no one needed any help. And we can even go in and actually see all of the players. We can see how many answers they got correct, their final score. This personalized learning shows me that Carolina and Mark actually went in and continued practicing um, after their Kahoot finished. Um, so I can see again, maybe Holly and Winston need a little bit extra help, but otherwise people did pretty good. And you have this ability to, to go in and click on the student and see exactly the questions that they got right or they got wrong, how long it took to answer them. And you can also have this nice overview um, when you hit questions. So it'll really quickly let you know, okay, this one question seemed to be the hardest for students. Um, just if I click on it, I get reminded about what the question is. And then I can see, okay, who, who got it right and who got it wrong. So Kahoot is a really good formative assessment tool. Um, and it's, it's really useful to kind of follow students throughout um, the semester, seeing how they've done. And lastly, um, if you've been teaching your students, you know, for a couple of weeks now, and you've done a couple of Kahoots, you have this ability to combine reports. And so basically what you would do is you would select um, all the cahoots you wanted to combine and select combine. Now for our purposes, these are all quite different cahoots and I unfortunately have not had participants that have done all of these. Um, but again, if these are all cahoots created for one of your courses, you have this really nice way to kind of have this overview um, throughout time of how students have been doing on their cahoots. So um, I'm gonna turn it back over to 
Alex, who is going um, to show us or launch a Kahoot where we can practice some of these, um, some of the variety of question types that Kahoot has. Yes, thanks so much, Holly. Yes, let's end with a bang and uh, do a Kahoot all together. Um, so uh, I mentioned before there was a, a few cool features. A lot of the, these features are all available on the um, EDU plan. So uh, if you haven't got to use them before, this will be your moment. OK, uh, so uh, hopefully we can all uh, see that. So we're going to just do a classic mode Kahoot. OK, uh, so get your devices ready. I'm going to expand the QR code uh, here so we can uh, either join with your iPad or phone. Um, if you want to do it on your computer, that's fine. Just make sure you're doing it in another window. Uh, so you'll need to see questions on my screen and answer on your own screen. If you click on to my screen, it will do nothing. Um, oh, so I'll keep that QR up there. Um, you can also play around with your character and uh, change its hair or accessories or change what it is. Um, nice. I see everyone's putting in uh, sensible names. If you have students that don't put sensible names in, then you can do an automatic nickname generator to stop them doing that. If you don't want a bunch of swear words on your screen, that's fine. Um so I'll wait for some more people to, to join before we kick off. First in our uh, series of questions, um, we're gonna do pin answer. So where is the Kahoot head office? I've only given you 20 seconds to answer, so quick, quick. It's only a map of Europe, so that gives you, narrows it down to your continent. Do you know where we come from? Move the map around to try and move the pin. Oh, we have pins everywhere. Uh, we've got some in Spain and France and things. It is actually Norway. Um, only two of you got that right. Um, it could have been two of my colleagues, who knows? Uh, but hopefully it was uh, two of you guys. Uh, yes, it was founded in Oslo. And that's where our big head office is. Um, so... Uh, I work in the Barcelona office, but yes, the OG office is in Oslo. It definitely confused me first at first because it says Kahoot.it. So I was thinking IT Italy. So I know a couple of people thought Italy as well, but no, it's meant to be like Kahoot it. And yes, it's Norwegian. And Holly is uh, actually based out in Norway. Okay, right. Let's see who actually... Got that right. Oh, very good, Karin. And uh, whoever is Germany as well. Very good. Representing the whole country, I assume. <laughs> um, very nice. This is the word cloud fe feature. So what subject do you teach? So just type the answer. What subject do you teach? Obviously, maybe some of you are not teachers, but I uh, just want to see what subjects we've got going on. see we've got quite a few coming in English is a big one that's what I used to teach uh ESL and EFL would also come under that English as a as a foreign language and English as a second language that would all be in there uh with languages IT and education let's see nursing is uh also a big one French language phlebotomy I don't even know what that is but uh it sounds clever um mathematics bacteriology oh my goodness um and oh and then another nursing one nursing fundamentals okay um lovely uh this is a great uh one to use with students just to kind of uh get an idea of what everyone's thinking uh and yeah automatically the one with the most amount of people that have said the same thing comes up the biggest okay um so that's a, 
a nice one to, to try out. So it could be if you're introducing a new topic, you could say, you know, what does everybody know about phlebotomy? For me, I'd be writing nothing. Um, <laughs> other people might have loads of ideas. So they, they would all come out in this format. So the next one is another opinion based one poll. How do you usually use Kahoot in your lectures? The assessment way, reviews, student engagement, all of it. Five seconds left. So I set the timer very quick, so I know a lot of you have to be on it to answer it. <laughs> okay, so only a few of you use it for formative uh, assessment. Um, it, it can definitely be used that way, especially as you can assign uh, the Kahoot. So if you assigned something for homework, uh, then it would automatically be in the system and you could see it. So it would be like automated marking for you, which is great. Review, really useful at the end of term, at the end of the year um, to see uh, what people have learned and trying to prep them before an exam. So again, I would use the assign feature for students if you want them to do that. Um, also, if you have a PDF overview of all the things they've done in the year, like a big summary sheet, that you could use the AI generator, put that in there and it make a quiz. So it will be like a end of term quiz, end of module quiz, um, if you've got a kind of summary document. Um, okay, student engagement, definitely. Um, especially if you integrate the questions throughout your presentation, so they never know when it's coming. Um, that would have been especially useful for my university students because I had a nine o'clock on a Friday slot. So yeah, definitely had to um, kind of bring those hungover students out of their shells. And all of the above, very nice. Okay, open-ended. So this is where you can write about 250 characters. Okay, so a particular feature that you learned about today that you'd like to try in your own classrooms. Second. Okay, sorry, I didn't give you long to write those, but let's see what we've got. Show answers. Okay, lots of people saying AI, yes. The map, yeah, pin location. That's a really nice one to open uh, something with. Um, so either of the where you're from or do you know which country this is from? Um, okay, let's see. Presentation from a document, definitely. It's a nice one. Um, let's see. Using the uploaded PDFs and slides. Um, oh, team mode for large in person classes and reports. Nice. Um, surveys. Yeah, I think surveys is a, is a cool one. Mind map. Yeah, really nice for like collaborative ideas. Okay. Um, so yeah, a lot of these, as we see them, um, we can uh, see that some of these are uh, similar uh, and, and stuff. So it's nice that we've got some of the similar ideas here. Okay, um, right, let's move on. This is another open-ended question. So you can write um, what you like. Additional features that would be valuable for higher education professionals. Um, so any other ideas you have or anything you'd like to be covered in other webinars? So it either might be a feature we already have that exists or one that you would like to exist. So yeah, if you're not as familiar with the product, it might be harder to think about. But yeah, it could be something to do with reports or assessment or... Depends what you're doing your classroom. Oh, okay, one of you said in the question, preparing reports, mm -hmm. yeah. 
that's good, especially as they can generate automatically. Yeah. Okay, excited to see what you guys think. Okay, let's see the answers. Ooh. Show them. Ooh. Uh, PowerPoint integration, yep, yeah, that is coming soon. I think for the meantime, if you have PowerPoints, um, just download them into PDFs and pop them on or import them into Google Slides. Um, students to be able to play after class is over, maybe while record, watching a recording of the session. Oh, I see what you mean. So um, a lot of lectures nowadays are recorded and put on the LMS systems. Um, I guess you would uh, have to, any student that wasn't live in your class, you would have to assign them the Kahoot. So what I would do is, if you're recording quoted lectures on there, have the assigned uh, Kahoot alongside. Uh, drama exercises, oh, that's an interesting one, yeah. Um, Spark uh, and Kahoot. Um, we have a feature called Sparks, um, but I don't know whether that's the the one you were thinking of. Um, we have a feature about Sparks, about doing discussion-based things in the classroom. Um, okay, encouraging students to create their own cahoots for their projects. I like that one. Really good for project-based learning. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. Okay. Uh, and yeah, more specific webinars. We do have a couple of more webinars in this uh, series, so don't worry. Okay, final one is brainstorm. So topics you'd like to see for future webinars. Okay, so might be similar to what we've talked about before. You can submit up to three ideas. Um, so pop some ideas on. You can't put loads of text onto each idea. So think of a snappy way to... Um, summarize your ideas. What's great about Brainstorm is that when we see all the answers, we can group them together and we can also vote on them, which is nice. A few more seconds. Right, sorting the ideas. Okay, so we can, as you can see, oh, lots of ideas, lovely. Okay, we can put uh, ideas together. Now, as you can see, this one with AI, they automatically knew that AI things were being mentioned, so they put them in a group. Um, see how others have used Kahoot for a, a maths class? Yes, um, we have lots of math teachers that use Kahoot. Sorry, math, as you would say in the States. We do it more than once in the UK. Um, okay, stories, oh, interesting. Um, nice, sheets with simple directions. Ah, so like kind of instructions for Kahoot. Yes, okay, very nice. Um, Teach listening whilst uh, using Kahoot, writing essays in an interesting way. Oh, yes. Um, kind of getting people to do that basic academic skills is a, it's a great one with Kahoot. Um, helping children to think. Nice. Um, so AI, I would pop it. Oh, that's the wrong one I put it in. I pop it up here into our AI group. There. So, yeah, you can group ideas. A series of cahoots that are multidisciplinary. Very nice. Cahoots for collaboration. Um, okay. Um, group based activities. Mm, lovely things. Better music. <laughs> you can actually change the music. Um, so, you choose uh, the music when you do your initial setup. Um, I mean, you can't just choose a random pop song. It's, there is a set kind of music that you could use, but you can uh, do it. Ah, oh, special needs students and also accessibility. We did actually uh, a webinar in the summer that uh, covered some accessibility and inclusivity topics, um, which has recorded in our webinar section of our website. So that was specifically for working with neurodivergent students. So that will be worth a look, but very useful for future topics as well. 
Um, and there are some how-to videos and how-to photos on the website. Um, so if you're new to the game, then you can definitely do that. So now you can vote. So you can click on um, any of the ideas that you like, click on them on your own device and see which you think are the sort of the best ideas. So we can look at them for future webinars. Okay, All right, coming up to the final 10 seconds. Let's see which ideas you like the best. This is a good one for any kind of collaborative projects you're doing with your students. Oh, let's see what people said. Oh, okay. For designing a lesson for special needs students. Excellent. Okay, good to know for the next one. Step by step interactive training sessions. Okay, nice. Student feedback and reflection. Mm, very good. How to use group based activities. Oh, fantastic. Okay. And that was the best one with the 17. So thank you, Karine, for suggesting that one. Excellent. So now it takes us to the podium. Um, so well done, this one. Very good. Um, Oh, Germany, here we go. And the final one. Oh, is it? Green. Lovely. Fantastic. And Ella and Ken, Nitra at the end. Well, that was um, an amazing session. Thank you all for joining in and learning more about how you can use Kahoot for this back to school. Um, we have a lot of um, exciting new features to check out um, and we'll be hosting two more webinars this back to school. The next one on AI, a deeper dive into using AI on September 17th. And then a deeper dive into assessments and assignments on October 3rd. And both of those will also be at the same time. Um, so we hope you can join us. Um, but yeah, thank you again so much for, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, everyone. It was uh, lovely to meet you all and hope to see you in future webinars. Bye. Bye-bye.